Hello everyone and welcome to another video. How's everyone doing? In today's video, we're in for a strange match. Lately, I've been facing a lot of Karthus junglers, and it's become a recurring challenge. I know we can win against Karthus, we just need to be patient. But in this video, we'll be on the back foot right from the start. This game is going to be tough, and there will be plenty of funny moments. So enjoy everyone. Since Karthus decided to go for an early gank, I countered his jungle, knowing Karthus is very gold and experience dependent. While we aren't as much in the early game, I opted for a build focused on durability rather than pure damage, including Winter's Approach, Frozen Heart, and Spirit Visage. This build is my go-to when I anticipate a tough game at Champ Select, as it balances our high damage with enough resilience. Meanwhile, the enemy H top lane was playing aggressively with Ignite, so I decided to pay Jax a visit. It was definitely worth the return. This type of gank is rarely expected because the pathing is unorthodox, allowing me to catch Jax in a vulnerable position. Since he doesn't have teleport, killing him after he's used Ignite is a big advantage. Unfortunately, our top laner died in that gank. I could have continued camping Jax, but I wanted to secure my own camps to prevent him from invading my bot side. Karthus, with his early lead, could capitalize there, especially with Leona and Samira constantly looking for engages. The strange thing in this game is that Karthus is making very aggressive plays without any vision. Sure, I make risky plays sometimes too, but without Flash, I have no idea where his confidence is coming from. This overly aggressive playstyle on a champion like Karthus feels completely foreign to me. Also, their team composition doesn't seem to benefit much from this approach. Early on, securing the jungle camps is crucial because you can't guarantee you'll get all the scuttle crabs. It feels like Riot is trying to force attention to the top side, whereas usually, bot side is more valuable due to the dragons by Riot. But now, imagine being able to secure both the dragons and the crabs. It's hard for anyone to counter that and make a comeback. After that strange encounter around the scuttle, I decided to gank bot side. The main reason was that with champions like Jax and Azir, I wanted to give my solo laners a slight edge so they could win their lanes on their own, making the game easier for everyone. Unfortunately, both top and mid laners are struggling hard, and to make it worse, our support and ADC are not in sync. This game has been in shambles from the start. The sad part is that you'd think after a successful gank on bot side, we'd be back in the game, but unfortunately, we're not. We have a fundamental issue with the skill gap on our top and mid laners. After that successful gank, I thought, why not? Bot lane doesn't have flash, and they look like a matching duo with their skins. I figured let's take them both down and stir up some chaos for the night, maybe tilt them enough to give us a chance at winning. Nothing is more aggravating than a couple flaming each other in League. But sadly, it seems Jin is a skilled player among them. Or maybe we're just getting rusty, and our dodging skills aren't what they used to be. The funny thing is, this guy's really playing hardcore mode. Sure, you get Mana Regan in the jungle, but not that fast, my friend. He was basically toggling his E on and off. Honestly, that kill put us in a good mood since everything else was going downhill. We were losing by a huge margin, but little moments like this help you stay sharp in the game. Now, the fact that we managed to steal the top side scuttle is a huge win, especially since we're losing in almost every other part of the game. Denying them anything at this point is a double win for us. The logic is simple. If you're ahead, you naturally take all objectives on the map. So, if the losing team manages to secure something they shouldn't have, it's like we've won twice as much. But sadly, this is where our share of poor decision making comes in. I tried to push my luck and go for another kill at his red, but I believe we failed. At one third health, we just didn't have enough damage to finish him off. This is exactly where the difference between press the attack and grasp of the undying on Volibear becomes clear. Going with grasp lets you get something valuable out of every gank, building a solid foundation for the mid game. Press the attack can be viable if you're ahead, but when you're behind, you sometimes can't fully leverage its potential. At this moment, it's clear that our win condition lies in the bot lane, even though Leona and Samira aren't entirely in sync. Their combo, however, is something we can rely on to build a lead so we can properly fight in the late game rather than the mid game. Unfortunately, the enemy mid laner is way ahead in gold and experience, making things harder for us. But sometimes, you just have to hold on and never give up. This escape was only possible because of my swiftness boots. We haven't yet completed the jungle item, so we're missing the extra movement speed in bushes. Otherwise, things wouldn't have being so tight. The movement speed bonus is doubled when heading toward enemies, but only normal when retreating, which made this escape harder than it should be. Now, without sugarcoating it, the game is going poorly. This might be our first real step forward in the mid game, but the sad truth is we're behind on every metric of progress. We've only just completed our first item, which gives us health and mana, 
and there's still a lot to achieve before we can secure anything meaningful in this game. I think finishing Winter's Approach first was a bit of a mistake, as I only managed to complete the item after almost getting my second one. If I had just prioritized the tier and delayed Winter's Approach until later, it would have been a much more optimal approach for an undying Volibear build. I don't know much about the Fiora vs. Jax matchup, but I assumed Jax has the upper hand because of his Counter-Strike duration. It seems like he's playing with Fiora's timing, baiting her into activating abilities randomly, which stops her from parrying effectively, giving him the edge. As for me against Jax, this build is my main counterplay. I'm focusing on becoming so tanky that he simply can't kill us. That was my thought process once I saw the champ select. Now of course the enemy teleport is putting us in a tough spot since the enemy is trying to deny us every advantage. I was hoping for a one versus one kill but we're still lagging behind. Despite that, I have a lot of faith in this build. Trust me, it has so much potential that I wouldn't be surprised if it gets nerfed in the upcoming patches before the season ends. Another weird thing I've noticed in this game is that if your laner is left alone and fails to take a tower or two, it's a clear indication that they need a serious spanking. They didn't rotate with the enemy mid laner or top laner. It feels like they're skipping class, playing like this is some pro match. This way of playing doesn't generate any gold for us and they probably just end up dying to the enemy jungler, which is honestly a bit tilting. The lack of pressure from my team is putting me in a position where I'm considering buying a hull breaker just to have some push potential when I'm left alone in a lane. I know for sure that once I reach my core items, I'll be a menace in one versus ones, and having Hullbreaker would be a total advantage. The only issue is that Cosmic Drive looks much better on paper because it provides everything we need, plus ability power. So, this will be a test call, and I'll only know what to build once we reach our three core items. Regarding our build, to be honest, the only thing I hope for is to become an unkillable machine. I don't care how long it takes. Once we reach our core items, we should be a solid rock that chases anyone. When we bite someone, that person should be dead, no matter how much they try to escape or how many flashes or dashes they have. The main goal of this build is to focus all our efforts on eliminating our target one by one, hopefully the one which is marked by the bite. Now, after thinking it over, I believe the best way to use Herald, aside from taking towers, is to escape from sticky situations or to engage in them. The Herald charge gives you 250 true damage and a knockup, which can be really effective. I'm still unsure if you're Yasuo's ultimate benefits from activating it against that type of knockup. Now the game has gone so far against us that the enemy team is securing the Drake. Of course, I've cut a lot of parts from this video because we couldn't farm. We were just running around like headless chickens while the enemy team took up three drakes and went for the soul. Luckily, the stars aligned, and we managed to catch them in an awkward position. This would be considered our first meaningful team fight. Now, you'll notice the difference compared to how we started the game. Some of you might say that if I had gone with press the attack, the damage I deal now would be much more considerable. I agree, but the issue with press the attack is that it provides damage. However, against Jax, we won't be doing much to him during his counter-strike. Of course, all of this is theoretical, not practical. I'm just trying to make it work in a reliable way on my videos. The awkward situation is that my allies are not contesting the Drake. We can't proceed, and it's challenging to make any impactful plays in the game. So I decided, you know what? I will sacrifice myself to deny them the soul, and it worked. The never give up mentality pays off, especially in the most critical situations. Can you believe that after almost 25 minutes of gameplay we've finally reached our core items? Now we are the bear we wanted to be. At this stage, I have no excuse for losing this game. If I fail, the loss will be entirely on me. That's why I'm building Volibear this way, to create a situation where I have total control over the game's outcome. Of course, this assumes that my allies are human beings and not bots or animals, but let's assume I'm playing with average players who understand their champions and are motivated to win when there's a high chance of success. As for our strategy right now, we don't have one. We're going to kill anyone and everyone that stands in our way. However, we do have a method for fighting. We should always bite the target with the mark. If we fail once in any engagement or fight, the odds of dying in the next few seconds increase significantly. Against their composition, we can witness the true power of Volibear. This Lux we found randomly in the jungle will demonstrate that we have one clear goal. We will chase any one we see whether they're dead or alive. The enemy team doesn't have anything to deal with us. They lack a solid frontliner. We can just ignore Jax. He'll go after our carries and they need to handle him themselves. It's not my responsibility to peel for the carries at this point. Even if my allies die, we must remember that we need to carry ourselves. Sometimes it's good to be carried by others, but the main goal is to be your own army. I can say fairly that we're winning not just because of me, but also because the ADC is trying to win the game. Most of the kills are on our ADC while the top side, mid lane, and support 
are almost clueless about what's going on. On the other hand, we can chase anyone, kill anyone, and most likely survive most damage, unless they focus us all at the same time. At this stage of the game, we can withstand most of their damage. The only thing I fear about this build is that it usually represents the calm before the storm, because what will likely happen is that the enemy team will realize how incredible our shields are. If they have any sense, they'll focus on reducing our survivability through Serpent's Fang, only item that counters this build. This is exactly where the fourth item should come in handy. We shouldn't reinforce our main defensive ability in this build, which is shields. We need to go for damage instead. We either go for damage, or we go for jack show. And when I say damage, I'm not talking about ability damage. I mean items like Riftmaker, Cosmic Drive, or Hullbreaker. Dawn Core is also an option, but I didn't get the chance to test it so far. And going for that item in a game like this with no pre-testing might feel like trolling if we lose between me and myself. After the many backs and forths, we're making some progress regarding team fights in the jungle. To be honest with you guys, I hate fighting in the jungle. It's very awkward for Volibear. You have your ultimate, and the moment you use it, everyone flushes away while you're stuck between the entrance and the exit of the jungle, taking damage and randomly dying. That's why I prefer the blue pet. At least if we're fighting in the jungle, I have some movement speed. That's the only reason I take the blue pet. Well, after all of those shenanigans, we're reaching a strong standing point. We're now inviting a challenge. Trust me when I say this. Whenever we fight, I'm usually the only one left standing while everyone else is dead and the enemy team isn't phased at all. So I thought to myself, let's embrace the mental warfare. If I can manage to one-on-one -on -one the enemy, their team will be tilted, or at least it'll take two or three of them to take me down. With the presence of Jax, I want to test this build against him. Whenever there's danger, we run toward it. Sadly, this Jax knows that this build can only lose to an on-hit Jax with Blade of the Ruined King and Rageblade. However, if he's running any half-assed build, we stand a strong chance against him. Surprisingly, I thought this build wouldn't hold up against Azir, but even against him, it proves to be quite solid. This reinforces my belief that Riot will nerf this build in the upcoming season, or by the end of this one. Their main goal seems to be that shields should come only from enchanters, not just anyone with access to this item. Volibear's build came out of nowhere this year, becoming ridiculously strong with Grasp of the Undying, Unending Despair, and Ingenious Hunter. Even after those nerfs the runes got removed, the build remains solid because it revolves around items now, not runes. Since Riot has nerfed most runes and item stats, the only thing left are specific passives. For example, the upgraded Winter's Approach grants a shield every two seconds. Can you imagine? If you manage to immobilize a target, you get that shield. With Volibear, we can slow, immobilize, and slow again. Plus, we have Smite that slows as well. This gives us four opportunities to use the item, which is pretty broken in my opinion. And the cherry on top? It only works on melee champions, which is a bizarre balance choice. It's broken, but still has some level of balance to it. Now, at this stage of the game, one versus ones aren't going to cut it to end the match. Grouping around the jungle entrances isn't working either. So I decided, let's charge straight down the mid lane entrance. The sad part is, if you get focused by everyone, you will die. That call from the enemy team was a solid one. I was low, and so were most of my teammates, but we had the red buff on our side. There was still a chance to turn this into a proper team fight if we started it right. And look and behold, Samira, our baby girl since the start of the game, finally delivered. She charged straight into the enemy team, catching them off guard since they had just used their ultimates and went for their main carry. Everyone had spent their key abilities, so it turned into a battle of perseverance. Luckily for us, we managed to secure the kills, even though we lost the Baron in the process. We took some hits, but we survived because we never gave up. And with that, my dear viewers, we've reached the last play of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and drop a like. Remember, you truly enjoy the game when you play it your way. In this game, I wanted to build Volibear in a unique way, and I had a blast doing it. This run may have been challenging, but it ended up being a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Until the next video, take care and peace.